Hello and welcome. I'm Mike De Griesley, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make your very own compact and highly durable hobo stove from this stainless steel thermos flask. Quite a simple process. I'm going to set my set square to eight inches. That's eight inches from the tip to the base. Then we mark off from the base of the thermos flask to the end there which is 8 inches. We mark that all the way around. Having marked it off, all I need now to do is start to hacksaw carefully around. So now we have our two sections. The outer casing is going to form the basis of the hobo stove. The inner section we're not going to throw away because that's going to form our cooking pot and we're going to hacksaw that off in a short while. So let's just now take a quick look at the outer casing. I need to clean this up with a file and then I need to remove this base section here. That's actually going to form um, our lid for the top. Now I do know that the only way to get those off is with a blowtorch. They're soldered. And not only that, but there is air inside. And once you start heating this up, the air inside expands. And well, let's just put it this way, it can go with a bit of a bang. So a bit of care on that part. Just giving it a quick filing down, removing the burr from the inside. We don't want any sharp edges in which we can cut our fingers. And I'm just going to finish the inside off with a little bit of dry emery cloth. And now comes the exciting part, or the dangerous part, whichever way you wish to look at it. We have to be careful with this, as I say, the air inside is going to expand and the likelihood it's going to go bang. So we gently warm it up, heat it up, rotating this as we go. Well, you don't seem to want to go. because it's cherry red this side. Well, disappointing. It didn't go bang or pop or even poof. I've let it cool down and the base came straight off. But we don't throw this away because the base now forms the lid of our hobo stove. Now, I must admit, this is not my usual brand of thermos flask. Ordinarily, there would be a piece of copper tubing, a small piece of copper tubing, just in the base there. Now, that's what they use when they create the vacuum. And I would have had to heat that up and just remove it. The solder comes away, easily removed. And it would have left me with a nice hole in the base there which is ideal for a temp peg to go through as there isn't one on this one I'm gonna have to drill but first what I want to do is just tidy up these edges tidy this up a bit with a little bit of uh, wire wool and dry emery cloth try and go in the same direction as the grain of the steel ok 
Okay, so there it is, it's tidied up. I still need to drill the hole in the base. So next, what I'm gonna do is use this template which I've already made. Um, it has an aperture there, already cut out, which is three inches by three inches. Because it's rolled round, it doesn't look it, it looks as though it's actually longer than it is wider, but it is three inch by three inch and it's three and a half inches up from the base so slip that over there get it to the edge there and all we do is we then get our felt tip marker pen and simply mark it all out now I have put points on for holes which need to go in. I generally space it um, two inch and then alternate the rows. You'll get an idea when it's all finished. Now once I've got that aperture in place what I want to do is just fix everything down with some sellotape this will stop it from moving about when I start to get the holes these holes marked up and popped so we'll just go round and centre pop where we're going to have the holes drilled. So now that that part's done, I can now remove the template and begin to drill and cut out the aperture here. Hmm. What I need to do is cut out this aperture here, and it can be a little bit tricky. Going along the camber section, easy. Coming down the straight edge, a bit more difficult. So what I need to do is drill four holes for the corners. needed a little bit of patience and determination more like a labor of love this okay so that's the aperture cut now as far as I'm concerned, that is the hardest part to do. It takes a bit of time, but um, it's worthwhile taking your time. So what's to do next is I need to drill holes in here. Now these holes are pilot holes. In fact, these two here are where I'll be putting my tent pegs, which will act as a rest. final task is more or less, well, cutting this section off here. That's going to form our cooking pot. Hmm, almost finished. I'm actually marking this one up seven inches from the base here to what is going to be the lip. And now I just need to saw it off.
basic elbow stone. The outer section of the thermos plus forms the basic stove itself. We have an aperture here which can, uh, you can feed fuel into. There are holes all around uh, to allow for aeration. We have a hole at the bottom. Now that hole is there in order to put a temp peg through and fix it firmly to the ground. Stops it from rocking about and falling over. Basic principle, fire in there. We have two holes here, two holes on the other side, two settings. We can fit a temp peg through. Our cooking pot rests on top of that. And then of course we can have our lid resting on top of that to keep out flies and other debris. How does it back away? Straightforward. Here we go. Cutting pot inside. Tent pegs inside. Lid on top. One hobo stove ready to go. Neat. Compact. Practical and durable. Donkey's years will less. See you around.